Welcome back to the second part of our series on how to start an urban beekeeping business. In part one, we laid the foundation by discussing the importance of urban beekeeping, acquiring knowledge and resources, finding the perfect location, and understanding the financial aspects. Now, in part two, we'll take a hands-on approach as we dive into the practical aspects of beekeeping. Get ready to learn about hive maintenance, pest management, honey harvesting, and much more. So, let's put on our beekeeping suits and get started. As an urban beekeeper, it's essential to ensure the well-being of your bee colonies. In this episode, we'll guide you through the process of hive maintenance, including regular inspections, monitoring the health of your bees, and managing the hive's environment. You'll learn how to spot common issues and take proactive measures to keep your bees happy and productive. Pest management is another critical aspect of beekeeping. Bees face various threats, such as mites, diseases, and predators. We'll introduce you to effective and eco-friendly methods to control pests and keep your colonies strong and thriving. You'll discover how to implement integrated pest management strategies and make informed decisions to ensure the health and vitality of your bees. One of the most rewarding moments for any beekeeper is harvesting the delicious and nutritious honey produced by their bees. We'll take you through the honey harvesting process, from removing the honey supers to extracting the honey and preparing it for consumption or sale. You'll gain insights into different extraction methods and learn how to handle honey with care to maintain its quality and flavor. But beekeeping isn't just about honey. Beeswax, propolis, and other bee products have numerous uses and commercial potential. We'll explore the different ways you can utilize these valuable resources to create a diverse range of products, from candles and cosmetics to beeswax wraps and propolis tinctures. You'll discover the art of value-added beekeeping and how it can contribute to the success of your urban beekeeping business. Lastly, we'll touch on the importance of ongoing learning and networking within the beekeeping community. We'll introduce you to local beekeeping associations, workshops, and conferences where you can enhance your skills, exchange knowledge, and stay updated with the latest trends in the industry. Building connections and being part of a supportive community can greatly contribute to your success as an urban beekeeper. Managing your hive, seasonal care, disease prevention, and pest control. With our bees happily buzzing in their new hive, it's time to talk about hive management. In this section, we'll cover seasonal care, disease prevention, and pest control. Caring for your bees changes with the seasons. In spring, this is the bee's growth phase. Your job is to give them space to expand and to check the queen is laying well. As we move into summer, the hive should be full of honey. It's important to ensure they have enough space to store honey, or they might feel crowded and decide to swarm. Autumn is the time to harvest honey, but always ensure you leave enough for the bees. They need it to survive the winter. Also, this is a crucial time to check for pests and diseases, which can decimate a hive over winter if left unchecked. Winter is a quiet time in the beekeeping world. In colder regions, your bees will huddle together in the hive, living off their honey stores. Moving on to disease prevention and pest control, it's vital to regularly inspect your bees for signs of illness or pests. Varroa mites are one of the most common and destructive pests, but there are treatments available. American full brood is a bacterial disease that can completely destroy a colony. If you suspect your hive has American full brood, it's important to act swiftly and get a professional diagnosis. Regular hive inspections are the key to early detection and treatment of both diseases and pests. If you're ever in doubt, reach out to local beekeeping clubs or extension services. Remember, an issue spotted early is an issue half solved. Becoming a successful beekeeper is not just about extracting honey but also about understanding and managing your bees' health and well-being. Because, after all, healthy bees mean a healthy, productive hive. Harvesting honey and other bee products. It's finally time for the sweet reward of your hard work and patience, harvesting honey. In this section, we're also discussing other bee products that you can harvest. The first rule of honey harvesting is, never take too much. Bees need their honey to survive, especially over the winter. A good rule of thumb is to leave about 40 pounds of honey in the hive for the bees. So, when and how do we harvest honey? The best time is late summer or early autumn when the bees have had a chance to gather nectar from flowers in bloom and convert it into honey. You'll know when it's time to harvest when you see that the bees have capped the honey with wax. The process of harvesting involves removing these frames from the hive, scraping off the wax caps, and then using a machine called a honey extractor to spin the honey out of the frames. But honey isn't the only thing you can harvest. Bees also produce beeswax, propolis, and royal jelly. 
Beeswax is used by the bees to build their comb and is highly valued for its use in candles, cosmetics, and more. Propolis is a sticky substance that bees collect from trees and use to seal gaps in their hive. It has antimicrobial properties and is used in natural health products. Royal jelly is a nutrient-rich substance that worker bees feed to larvae. It's valued for its health benefits, but harvesting it is more complex and usually left to more experienced beekeepers. Remember, always handle your bees with care and respect, especially during harvesting. The health and well-being of your bees are the most important things. Marketing and selling your honey. Now that we've harvested our honey and other bee products, it's time to think about marketing and selling. In this segment, we're going to discuss how to brand, market, and sell your products effectively. Your brand is your identity. It's what sets you apart from other honey producers. Think about what makes your honey special. Is it the urban environment? The types of flowers your bees have access to? Your sustainable practices? Once you have your brand story, you can create a logo, labels, and packaging that reflect it. Remember, your packaging is the first thing customers see. Make it attractive, and always include essential information such as the weight, type of honey, and your contact details. With your honey bottled and ready to sell, let's think about marketing. In today's digital age, a website and social media presence are critical. Share the story of your urban beekeeping journey, your practices, and the benefits of your local, raw honey. Engage with your audience through regular updates, photos, and even behind-the-scenes videos. Consider selling your honey at local farmers markets. It's a great place to meet your customers face-to-face, -face, tell them your story, and let them taste your honey. Local food shops and health stores may also be interested in stocking your honey. Additionally, you can look at online sales. Platforms like Etsy or even your own website can reach a wider audience beyond your local area. Just be sure to research shipping regulations, especially if you're shipping internationally. Remember, marketing is about telling your story and connecting with customers. Authenticity goes a long way. And that concludes our two-part series on how to start an urban beekeeping business. We've covered a wide range of topics, from the fundamentals of beekeeping to the practical aspects of hive maintenance, pest management, honey harvesting, and utilizing bee products. We hope you've found this series informative and inspiring. Now it's your turn to take action and turn your passion for bees and sustainability into a thriving business. Remember, urban beekeeping is not only a rewarding entrepreneurial endeavor but also a way to make a positive impact on our environment and food systems. If you haven't already, make sure to watch part 1 of this series to get a comprehensive understanding of the steps involved in starting an urban beekeeping business. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell, so you never miss an episode. We would also love to hear from you. If you have any questions, experiences to share, or if you've already started your own urban beekeeping business, please leave a comment down below. We value your input and are always here to support and inspire each other. As you embark on your journey as an urban beekeeper, remember that the key to success lies in patience, dedication, and a genuine love for these incredible pollinators. With the knowledge and practical skills you've gained from this series, we're confident that you have what it takes to thrive in the world of urban beekeeping. Thank you so much for joining us on this exciting adventure. We'll be back with more valuable content and inspiring stories. Until then, keep buzzing with passion and let's create a sustainable future together. See you in the next video.